Okay, so uh, so the did you get the virtual machine? Uh, who has the virtual machine? Please stand. Okay. Okay. So the idea here is uh, very simple. Uh, I will uh, help you go through the uh, internal states of the SMT solver such that you can understand how how Z3 solver works. Probably you know CDCL. Okay. So uh, what's happening is that uh, so we look at the inside the solver. And uh, so first we need some tools to, uh, but it's already installed in your virtual machine. So if you have the virtual machine, everything is installed there and we will see how to use it. Okay. So once you want to uh, use a solver, you want to understand it's working, you need an IDE okay? and, or, and a debugger. So it, it, we are going to use Eclipse. Eclipse is not the only one. Actually, I don't like Eclipse. I use Emacs, but I think I'm old and most people don't like Emacs. So this slides I have changed to from last night from Emacs to Eclipse. You still have some references to Emacs. If you spot them, they meant to be Eclipse. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. So I hope and I, I, I'm learning Eclipse since last night. So hopefully it will work. Okay. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So let's see. Uh, so yeah, you can choose any IDE. So the first thing is that you. Uh, so what? How do you do? So you you start Eclipse. Okay. And uh, when you start Eclipse, you will, uh, you, you, let's suppose you, you press F11, okay. You should see this folder, Z3 build, and you press F11, it will just basically restart the system. It pretends to compile, things is already compiled in your virtual machine, and uh, it, so it will start basically start at the main entry point, okay. So what happens is that, uh, uh, so, Z3 is a very complex software. It's a million lines, millions of lines of code. Once you do that, you will be completely lost. You'll say, okay, what, where should I start looking? How do I understand this big code base? And once you have this kind of experience, it overwhelms you. And uh, if you want to develop in this kind of field, you should be able to comfortable with that feeling that I don't understand what's going on. And I have a sort of understanding what algorithm is being implemented. And how does it connect to actual functions and classes? I have no idea. But I try to look bits and pieces of it, start building a picture, and I will never have a complete picture. And based on that sense of judgment, I will make my changes. Whatever, I, I have a new idea I want to implement, I want to change the, uh, change the restart algorithm or whatever part of it you want to change, you change it, okay? And hope your hunch is right, okay? And, and that's the way to operate, okay? And if you hope to get the full understanding, you'll spend months and months reading the code. It will never finish. I'll never have an understanding. Okay. So let me recap the uh, what is the we're going to see today. Okay. So first thing we have term management in Z Z3. The the what is the term management is uh, when you have a, such a solver like something like Z3, it has to handle a lot of formulas. We usually talk about complexity of uh, solving the formulas, but Actually, building the formulas and solving is itself becomes very complex business once you are handling quantifiers and substituting an, a, a, a formula. Formulas. For example, let's suppose you have uh, let's suppose you construct a formula x plus y greater than or equal to three. Okay, and you some point of time you substituted x by z. So you created another formula z plus uh, y greater than or equal to three. So what happens is. Uh, now there are two formulas in the store, okay? And if you are, let's suppose, building formula, substituting them, and again, I, once few naive users keep doing them, okay? And they never throw away old references, so it, it gets clogged up in your memory very quickly, okay? So Z3 has to be very smart about it, how it manages the terms you create, and how it intelligently gets rid of them, okay? When they are not of use, okay? And uh, secondly, uh, when it it has this term store, uh, it's a uh, so it has to separate from the solving and the term stores. So when you create a, when you start a Z3, it has a context object. Context has, object has a term store in it. So every, you can create multiple context objects. Every context objects have different term stores. And every context can create many solvers. So these solvers share the same term store. Okay? So that's the, that's the idea you need to understand. And what happens is once you're building a tool, uh, people end up managing their own term stores, okay? So you should always use Z3's own term store. Uh, you are interacting with Z3 because what happens is Z3 is fairly clever about it and that's very sophisticated 
component. And if you don't use it and you try to maintain terms yourself, what you will keep referring to, you need to keep a map Z3 term store to your term store. And because you always have this reference active, Z3 cannot throw anything away. And because of that, you will just fill up the memory. Okay? So you have to be very mindful how you use them. Okay? I will come to what is the tactics layer. Then there's CDCL implementation. Okay? CDCL implementation, the way you see it, it's very close to it. The, 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 the way you see the algorithm, you'll see the source code. I will show you today. Uh, it implements very, very close to the algorithm. But there are a lot of uh, clever optimization there. I will go to one of them, but, but, there, but there are hundreds and dozens of, uh, hundreds of them. And if you don't understand them, uh, I, I mean, take a look at them. Okay? You, will, you will learn a lot about how to program it, uh, well. And uh, those tricks and techniques, as uh, earlier speakers have said, are not covered in any textbook. Uh, so uh, today I will just uh, uh, go over an example of theory of equality. Okay? So what was a CDCL algorithm? Let me recap. Uh, so what happens is you have a CDCL, a CDCL T. Okay? So in a CDCL T you have a, this basically Boolean solver. It has a Boolean problem, a world. And what it, uh, it assigns uh, bits to true and false. And uh, these bits are corresponds to uh, theory terms. Okay? And then it sends to theory solvers. And uh, sometimes it says, OK, unassign something. It's a backtracking say, sense, call is sent. And time to time, it non-deterministically says, OK, what is the current state? Is it checks at or not? OK, is satisfiable or not? And uh, if in response, at this point, it may give a response that uh, what other things, are, because we have said these things true, these other things may also have become true. Or it can also respond that, oh, things you have said so far are contradicting each other, and here is the conflict reason, reason of conflict. Okay? So this basically uh, uh, covers the, the overall architecture. Okay? So we are going to look at this problem. Okay? So this is the smallest uh, example I could construct, where it actually goes to solving. Anything smaller I constructed, the pre-processing step solves it. Basically, what happens is there are a lot of patterns in Z3, and it keeps replacing formula with using those patterns, and very quickly discovers false or true, whatever it is. And so this is the smallest thing I could construct. So this is still, uh, in, a, in, a, in a, such a short setting, uh, difficult to follow, but let me see what, what, let me show you what's going on. So this is about function f, which takes u is uninterpreted type, and function, so these are the facts we know about function, okay, f. So f, uh, f square, let's say f of f, f square is a equals to a or f to the power 4, I think, a equals to uh, a, okay? So second statement says uh, f cube equals to a. or f to the power square a equals to f of a. Okay, so last is saying f of a is not equal to f. Okay, is it satisfiable or unsatisfiable? So how would you know it and how would you, how the solver may do it? F of f to a. So, uh, I mean, either side you make a guess. Okay, let's suppose, yeah, you were saying? No, I said one would do by substitution now. Okay. F of f to a equals, so. So let's, but there's a disjunction here, right? So I so first make a choice, which one is, which of them is true. Yeah. So uh, let's suppose solver decides this to be true and this to be true for yeah. both the clauses. So, uh, so what happens, there's a method called union find. So Z3 implements union find to find these, uh, to solve these constraints. What happens, if you have basically uh, five terms. There's a one term here, f of a is another term, f square is another term. Okay, term one, term two, term three, term four, term five. Okay, so what will it do? It maintains the equivalence class of them. Okay, so it create, initially it create five different equivalence classes.
okay and the, it knows that f of a is not equal to a so it is 1 and 2 yeah yeah so is it, yeah so what happens is it it case it cannot be made equal okay so as soon as you put something uh, equal just suppose you say f square is equal to a so it what it says is that uh, which is 3 equals to 1 okay so it may say okay they are equal if 1 and 3 are equal if you apply f because that's a property of function okay if they have the same parameter the output is same okay so if these two are equal if you apply the function f on them they also should become equal where is that not the fact that it's a function by declaration that's a function. yeah now z3 will interpret it as a function and that is the axiom that will it use to to compute it okay so uh, what will happen is if apply the function f on both the terms it will get these two terms they become equal okay okay now on these two if you apply a function f again you get uh, this guy can become equal okay and uh, do you see contradiction being derived here no you need f cube a also equals to a right so if f cube a equals to a so since uh, uh, f cube is equal to a uh, we already have this edge okay so this edge is not important so once these two edges are created you have a con there's a path here and there's no path there okay so that's how it works okay so now we will going to see that how zc does this kind of reasoning okay so that's we saw the example okay so uh, okay so since uh, we have launched the solver last time okay uh, let's go ahead let's get to uh, let's run it okay so if you press f8 it will finish it and give you unsat okay let's see so yes okay so what happens is uh, so what we want is to put a breakpoint somewhere to such that program goes somewhere and stops okay so what I have done, I have put a breakpoint somewhere, and that's what you need to do. You need to find this file called smt underscore context.cpp, uh, which is at this location. Okay. So if you go in the build z3 build uh, folder, you will find this source directory uh, node, and then you go inside, you will find this file, and you put a breakpoint at there. Okay. Line number three three six six. Okay. If you stop there, okay, then you can do the interesting thing. That's where it becomes interesting. Okay. Okay. So, so the, what you can do here, you can see, you can probe the internal state of the solver. So there is something called display. So what is it? Display C error. What is what it does? It basically uh, prints the current state of the solver. Okay, so this is the current state of the solver, and what you can do is this: that uh, first you see the term store. The term store says assigns every term a number, okay, and it includes true and false also. So truth, uh, so binary values are plus plus citizen in Z3, so they are not differently treated, okay, and you can see that. It also listing the list of formulas which are, which are basically asserted. Formula number 30 and 33 and 35 are asserted in the system. And uh, it also tells you uh, uh, something more, which is not important for now. Okay? Yeah, it would. So here is a state. Okay. It has. It is telling me there are th three formulas which are uh, asserted, which are these three formulas. Okay, and it is said that uh, I will come to it. What these th these things are, and it's showing you the current state of the term store. Okay, so these are the. It's a starting point. Okay, then what happens is uh, you you run this solver. Okay, and uh, get to the. There's a step called internalize assertions. Okay, this this step. Okay, at this step it goes over the formula and initializes all the relevant theories it has to handle 
Okay. So, for example, in this particular formula, there is no integers, there are no integers, no rational numbers, no talk about arrays. So, it will not allocate memory for them and only allocate memory for the for equality reasoning, okay, because it sees the functions uh, being applied and they are being equated. Okay. So, so, let me put a breakpoint here and uh, execute to f8. Okay. So, after this I would like to see the current state, what has happened because of, so I display So, if I want to see the current state, now what has happened is, okay. So, what has happened, what has happened is, uh, it, it goes over all the terms, okay, and uh, it figures out that uh, every term, corresponding to the every term occurring in the formula, it creates a node like this, okay. And it has not, it has not processed the formulas yet and created a, this kind of edges yet, but it has created the nodes. Note that it is not only creating nodes for the, uh, the terms which we think are relevant, also creating nodes for the atoms also. For example, all the equality symbols, okay. So, if you say A equals to B, that also is a term within this equality store. So, what can happen, it can, it is very clever sometimes. So, sometimes it can discover that uh, that you are making A not equals to B, both are Boolean types and B is not equal to C and C is not equal to A. And if they are all Boolean types, then it is wrong reasoning, okay. So, it can discover by equality reason, that by doing the equality reasoning, okay. So, uh, so that is why you see so many terms being created for the just for equality reasoning. So, no matter what, so whatever theories you are have activated, all of their internal states you start seeing there, okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's move forward, uh, and then what we see is uh, after this it 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 continues, and uh, we'll see continue continue, and uh, this step this is called search. Okay, so we need to step inside a search. In this this search function is actually the solving happens. Actually, this is not the function. Uh, let me go and continue. Uh, in its search, this is not the function, that is a function. So, let me get inside it by pressing F5 and this is, what is this? What is this? This is, what is this? Some student should say, what is this? Propagate, what is being propagated? So, what it will do? It is a Boolean PCP, yeah, it propagates the, <laughs> it is a unit propagation, okay. Not only unit propagation, it also does the theory propagation. So, if there are theories are involved, for example, equality reasoning here, if whatever theory has to be propagated, it will propagate there and get, get back all the implied uh, facts from the solver, okay. So, okay, so let us see, if I run this. Okay, so you get another internal state, and now you can see that. Uh, oh, this formula store is not that important. I can just uh, okay. So now you can see that uh, it has uh, because there was a unit. Uh, uh, the, look at the current assignment. Okay, so the current assignment is. Since you have a unit clause, all the unit clauses are set to true without thinking, okay. So, when you did the propagation, they are set to true, okay. And it also telling you in which order it is going to set the other literals true or false, okay. So, uh, so remaining case splits is still telling you it is going to set there are four more atoms, okay. So, there are one, two, three, four, the four more atoms in the system and it has to set them true or false in some order, 
okay. So, it has already defined the order it is going to set them true and you can see that there is nothing, no, nothing has changed the set of equalist classes, okay. And soon it will change, okay. So, uh, let us continue. Okay. Now, what is this step? Decide what happens. <laughs> Somebody say out loud, student. What is decide? Yes, yeah, so it will. It will because there are four literals yet to be decided, and not all of all the asserted clauses have become true. This is true right now. We don't know the value of these two guys, right? So we to make them true, I need to set some of them true. Okay. So what will I decide? It pick the one of those literals and set them true or false. Okay. So let's see uh, if we go over this step, what will happen? Okay. So if we go this step, uh, so we can get the another dump and okay. So now you see that uh, 26 is said to be false. Okay. So one of the atoms has been said to false. However, that atom ne never occurred positively in the if I were implementing a solver I would just set it to true okay because it will make the clauses more likely to be true okay but that's not exact entirely good idea always why they may that may be the case because once you set it to the true you are reducing the work of the uh, the boolean work, boolean guy boolean solver but you are increasing the work for the theory okay so it is never clear setting a literal true or false is going to reduce your work. So, if, if in the word of SMT solver, it is not clear. So, I think Z3 always set it to false initially, okay. Actually, I am not sure what happens in general, but the, uh, in this particular code, this particular version of it always set, does that, okay. However, it is changeable, okay, it is modifiable, okay. So, once you set this to uh, false, then what happens? What should happen, okay. It has set one of them to false, okay. So, it has set uh, f square equals to a to false. So, this is false, then what will happen if I do the propagate next time? It has to make this guy is true, okay. So, and once you make this guy true, what will happen? This algorithm will trigger, okay. So, what will happen is then as soon as you set f1 equal to f4, equal then this algorithm will trigger <coughs> this algorithm will trigger and build start building equivalence classes so we will see that what, what happens next so we go f6 again so does the propagate okay and uh, let's see the state okay so, once you did this, okay, uh, so you see that uh, once I said this, this was unit clause, now I said this one to false, it forced, uh, yeah, basically it is this guy, okay. So, uh, it set 29 to be false, to, to be true, okay. Now, because of this equality you see this thing happening here it is said that f to the power 4 a equals to a okay for some reason it didn't say okay this was been set to false therefore this has become true okay therefore it has put them into the same equivalence class okay so you can see that it is now start showing you the equivalence classes okay this i is equivalent to this guy okay now this is true now this is false okay maybe now still we have not decided so what will happen it will it will has to decide one more time okay so that's uh, f6 f7 if you continue it comes back to the side again right so if once it decides again what do you see? Okay. So now it what is the happening? The current assignment. 
Okay, it actually after decide it needs a sort of a propagate also, then only you see the effect of decide. Okay, so it has made it another decision. It said uh, again the it picked it probably picked one of these guys and set them to false. Okay, and uh, so that is happening. One more thing has become false. Okay, now the propagation has to happen. Okay, so let's get to the propagate. Yes. Okay. Okay, if we execute this. Now it created all the equivalence classes, okay. Okay. Now all these uh, literals has been since this was false, this forced this guy to be true because they are a part of the same clause. Okay. So uh, now this big tw since 29 and 23 as is 29 and 32 became true, it triggered this whole chain reaction of equivalences. Okay, and it made all these terms equal. Okay, uh, one thing to note is is this: uh, a is equals to f square. F of a is equal to f square a. F cube is equal to f square a. F to the power four is equal to f square. A. If you know union find, you can see why that is happening. So there is always a master term, okay, and everybody has a pointer pointing to them, okay, and uh, by this way you can very easily manage the equivalence classes. And uh, so the, since you have a backtracking, you need a very clever way of what you to do. What you need to do is clever way of merging the equivalence classes and splitting them, okay. So what is being done is uh, in this way. Uh, uh, what happens is the circular linked lists are maintained. Okay, so each equivalence class is a circular linked list. Okay, so if you want to join a circular linked list, they have a, they both have a master node, and what do you do? They you switch the, the cross link their, uh, their pointers, and then becomes a bigger equivalence class. When you have to backtrack, it's very simple. You just go back to do this unit operation. Very efficient way of implementing equivalence classes. This is not the standard you will standard implementation you see in the textbooks. Textbooks they will tell you you find a directed acyclic graphs and you merge these graphs and each time you need to know for a node who is my master you traverse this graph up and you get to the, the get to the root and then you pick both the roots and then merge them. Okay? So that is not how it is implemented in Z3. The primary reason is they do not implement in a very standard way because of backtrack requirement. Okay, so now let's continue. What should happen now if I continue? Conflict, okay, because you have made things equal and you, somebody is saying they are not equal, okay, and then backtracking should trigger, okay. So uh, if you continue, uh, some point of time, it has to do the conflict, resolve conflict, it has already resolved and uh, uh, it will backtrack, let's not get into too much. Uh, let's see after propagate what's the state. Okay. So anybody can guess what's the state should be right now. Okay. Okay. Still has not realized it. Okay. So I probably don't fully understand how it works. So uh, let's do one more iteration. Okay. Okay. Let's see what's the current state. Uh, Okay, so it's still everybody the same equivalence class. We get again. So what it has to do is is when it is there's a conflict has to uh, lift up to the boolean world. Okay, so it has seen that. Uh, uh, so what it has to derive f a equals to a as an atom and push it into the boolean world and they create a not a in the boolean world and that what is doing in so, so many steps okay okay yes now it's going to trigger okay so uh, so what it has found is this uh, once it that conflict was detected it realized the decision it made to set this one to false and we forcing this one true uh, create the conflict okay so in result uh, what has happened? It's realized it learned this conflict clause. This has to be true. 
okay now this is made true once you made this true everything will basically fall into the place and it will just immediately realize that everything is sunset okay so yeah that's what immediately happen and immediately realize everything is sunset okay so this is uh, this is very short uh, talk i wanted to give to just show you that how you uh, manage the, how you can look into the big solver uh, inside it one more point i want to make is look at the size of the call stack okay so this is a, you are within the solver and there's a very long call stack okay anybody knows why that is the case before solving reaching the solver there is something that it does and then it starts the solving and why there is so many similar looking calls what is going on there any guess so there is a tactics layer okay uh, the idea is that uh, z3 is not a one solver it has many solvers inside it so i showed you one in one particular file there are there is a separate set solver in it okay so this is smt solver component if you just give the only boolean problem the execution go to completely different place okay so what happens is when you give it a problem it it guesses what is the best solver it should use okay it tries that if it fails it tries the another solver for a while so what is the policy of managing these solvers okay so this portfolio management of this portfolio is is called tactics layer okay and some of them are purely syntactic uh, analyzers they just look at the formula syntactically try to guess that how it is unsatisfiable and often the problem just go there and don't go past it okay so this is the pretty much what i wanted to show you and uh, i i would encourage you to just take this vm and in future if you uh, try to look around it and uh, in future if you want to add any feature uh, try to look inside the z3 sometimes very many functions you want to implement are already been tried inside z3 and abandoned okay so you would have some idea that you should not trust those idea they have already tried and lot of code inside z3 is just like this okay so i have I have tried it for example uh, i was very much interested in the theory of partial orders okay so i i implemented my own partial order and i was very excited it's working it's better than or there and then one day i showed it to nikolai oh yeah 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 we built this thing and then oh look at this version number 33328 and then there is it is there and yeah i checked it checked out and it was there okay and uh, it was much better than what i had built okay so uh, so it is important you just don't go on without looking okay please pay attention to the source code and they are very well engineered tools and if you understand their source code you will have a improve your programming skills thank you